Awesome, we're live. Thank you so much, Carlos, for joining me. Good morning. Hi. Yeah, good morning. <laughs> it's 11 a.m. here in Toronto. Yeah. Uh, my name is Tamila Rajasingham. For those of you that don't know, thank you for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about our first property, our experiences buying of our first home. And I really want to touch upon just walking you through the first time home buyer experience. And the reason why we wanted to do this is because when Carlos and I sat down and we were talking about our own clients and some of our own experiences, we realized that there were so much challenges and learning that came with it that we needed to have this dialogue online and public so that people can see that it doesn't matter when you buy it, we all have a chance of getting into home ownership. And really the philosophy and the process doesn't really change, even though the prices may have and the way you may do your offers might have, you know, and some of the conditions you might put in, but essentially the, the philosophy around it and your approach is very much the same from everything from, you know, aligning with the right people to having the right mindset. So. Uh, Carlos, uh, you know, I really love that you, you know, when we talked about this, you were like, okay, I wanted to really talk about like, where was our headspace at when right. we were buying our first property? Yeah. So, when, yeah. so tell me a little bit more about, yeah, maybe introduce yourself and then we'll jump into some of your thoughts. Okay. Concept. Sounds good. Hey everyone. Good morning. Welcome. So yeah. So today we're going to be talking about the first time home buyer process, our experience, our challenges, um, just so that, you know, you can also know that it's something normal right? Like you'll always go through these challenges, maybe even doubts. Um, so having like the right people around you to be able to support you, to give you answers that I find that is extremely important. Um, so again, I am a real estate agent here. I'm based out of Toronto. Um, and I, I believe personally, and you know, with Armila, that knowledge is power. The more you know, then the easier it is to make these decisions. Um, so that's exactly what we're going to talk about today, how to um, the first time home buyer process, which is scary. But at the same time, one thing that I remember you told me, Tarmila, when something is scary and exciting, that's when you really just need to go for it. That, like, that's when you know it's meant for you. It's meant to be yours. Um, so yeah, so sorry, what, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, no, like where was your headspace at when you had to buy your first home? And even just the opportunity, did you know it was the right time? Like, how did you know all of that? Yeah, so it was actually very interesting because I've always wanted to to own a property, right? It's always like that want, something you want, you want, and you think about it, you're constantly thinking about it, do I want it? But then there was, um, at that time, there was like news that you would look at and it'd be like, oh my gosh, like things are getting expensive or it's hard or you need this much. Like I was paying a lot of attention to what people were saying without actually doing the research. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was noticing that I was building a lot of like, just like a fearful mentality where it's like, I don't know, like even what questions to ask, where to get started, right? And I think I was like even just getting the incorrect information. And that at some point made me think, it's like, I really need to speak to someone, right? Someone that knows, someone that is experienced, someone that has gone through this process, right? Because if I'm building all these ideas for myself, I don't know what's true or what's not, right? So I think like I was just pretty much confused I was confused. I knew that I wanted to get into the market, but I never knew when was the right time. Yeah, me too. I was much right? younger one. And plus I was in, I was living alone at the time. And yeah. and for me was, I was going from places to places renting. And for me, I needed to get out of that. I wanted to own, I wanted to have more control. And I never wanted to give my, my way of life to a landlord and that things could change in a moment. And someone can come to me and say, you need to move in a couple of months. And right. I wanted... And I was just going from places to places. And I always, and you know, for those people that know my background and of me, you know, being away from home for so long, I felt a bit lost and I wanted to have a bit, and home for me felt vulnerable. And I wanted someone somewhere to come home to and 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 make it mine, you know, so that I don't have to yeah. move and change every six months, you know? And once I knew, I know I wanted to move and, and buy a property, but you're so right. Like the fear, like scarcity mindset. I think I really yeah, struggled yeah. with that because I knew that I wanted all the abundance in the world, right? You want all the yeah, good things yeah. in the world, but I felt like I'm never going to be good enough for something because again, I had all these false assumptions, you know, every time right. I would go to the wrong people. So do not go to the people that don't know yeah. this, go to people who are, you know, licensed realtors, licensed mortgage people. If you want to ask about financing, because I was going to people that own properties, but they were the same age as me or who just bought them they had no idea what to, what it's like to buy a property. And I would go to them and be like, so what's your payments like? Can you afford yeah, it? Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like, Whoa, no, no, no. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I was going to the wrong places trying to ask, find the right answers. And no. You know? And that's the thing, right? Like, I mean, sometimes like you go around way too much, right? And sometimes you don't you don't write you don't touch the right people. Right. And I think with one thing with that too, Darmin, is that when I first started thinking about it, I based on that, I already started kind of like psyching myself out and saying, wait, maybe I can't afford it. Right. Like I don't know. Like, I mean, I thought I had good credit. Right. I thought I had maybe a down payment. But at the same time, it's like, wait a second, in order for me to actually it, like know if I'm somewhat close to there, I have to take that step. Right. Like I have to take that action. You know, and even if you're not ready right now. Right. Maybe we were ready. Right. Maybe we had to wait six months, a year, two years to get to, to be ready. But it's at least that knowing that you there's something to work towards. Right. Yeah. And I think. And or sometimes some people are ready or they think that, oh, I don't have enough money. I'll never be able right. to afford. And then they right. realize that you actually didn't have conversation with family members that could co-sign for a little bit for yes. you. Yes. Or talk to a mortgage agent and look at your options. Maybe there's, uh, you know, financing available elsewhere. And right. I think and there's really creative ways for you to do it. And for me, like Josh and I, you know, we were at our full time jobs and Josh was actually in school. He had multiple part time jobs for people yeah. to know us. We had like three to five jobs at one point. And yeah. and that's how we were able to buy our property at a young age. Right. We bought, both purchased our first property at 23 and we were able wow. to do that. And, uh, yeah. And a lot of our friends, nobody had properties at the time. And we were able to do that because we we would work and people would always ask, how come you guys are always working like weekends and weeknights? And we're like, yeah. because we have goals and we wanted to reach them. And I know that we can't do that without you know, having to have these finances and I'm not going to depend on anyone right. in my family because right. I didn't have a really good relationship with them. So right. when you know those circumstances, take advantage of that. So if you have family members that are supportive, go talk to them. If you feel like you're not in the right financial situations right now that you can be prepared for in the future, then go speak to a licensed, qualified, you know, a mortgage broker that can look at your various options and tell you and kind right. of get you ready for home ownership. Again, I love that you said that it might not be tomorrow, it might not be six months, but a year. But that's why a lot of you won't you won't believe it. Some of our clients, I you know, I helped purchase property for somebody who's been wanting to buy it for months. Yeah, right? yeah. It, it, people don't call you, you know, and people do. Don't get me wrong. There are yeah. times people called and said, "Hey, I need you to list my property." And then there's very occasions where I've had people that call and said, "You know, I'm I'm not sure uh, if I could buy a property. Can I?" You know, and they ask you questions. So make sure that you. You know, if you're looking into buying your first property, just if that's in your, you know, in, in your, you know, your goals, think yeah. of start planning for them now. You don't know right. when you'll get there, yeah. but for make sure. sure you are doing the research. I love that you said knowledge is power because just, yeah. just talk to a lot of qualified people, talk to multiple realtors, talk to multiple right. mortgage workers, get multiple different, and maybe you might now want to live in downtown Toronto. But right. you may need to move to maybe Oshawa or maybe to Bowmanville and maybe, and yeah. that's okay. Maybe you might like it, but have you yes. been there before? Right. Maybe you may need to, you know, and maybe you need to do a little bit of research there. And that's exactly it, right? Like, I mean, fig not figure it out, but like also maintain like, you know, just like that motivation for it. Just because you go to like your mortgage agent, your mortgage broker, and they tell you, hey, you know what? Right now you don't qualify. Or you're thinking, hey, I want like a big house. I want a property, 800,000, right? Prices are rising. Prices are, you know, going crazy. But then you qualify only for like, let's say 500,000. That's not a reason for you to say, oh, I'm, I'm not going to do it then, right? Mm -hmm. It's like maintaining yourself in that mindset for you to keep on going, right? And if, again, more like, there, like I said, there's different creative ways to be able to get um, home ownership, right? Like there's a lot of professionals. There's people that do know like the ins and outs of the market, right? They know numbers. Yeah. So it's someone will tell you yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Right? And, and for those of you that are going to be watching this who are, again, thinking of getting into the market and home ownership and you have a lot of questions about, you know, who do I talk to? Do you have any access to a mortgage agent? What are the type of questions I should be asking them? Get yeah. in touch with us. And if there's any mm -hmm. questions that you may have that you're, before you even get to that phase, you're just struggling with the, even the type of questions to ask. Right. Get in touch with us because Carlos and I want to do this in, in a more of a, you know, a, a process way. We want to give you more media information, but let us know so that I can, I would love to, you know, help give that right information to you in the best way possible right. and for and and i don't want you to ever if that's again if if this is in your dreams in your wheelhouse and let's just sit together have an initial conversation and 
if there's any other questions, throw it in the comment section below. And we'll like to, even, even if you don't address it now, Carlos and I are going to be planning some more future uh, our lives together. This is really just a promo to kind yeah. of get the conversation moving. This is why today we're not, we don't have a sexual conversation because we really want to talk about it from our own perspective to right. let you know that yeah. home ownership is possible. It is how you structure everything from your mindset to your offers to making sure you have yeah. all your ducks lined up and it's just like playing a game right if you're going to play yeah. a certain game you're going to go play hockey make sure you have all the right equipments right you know right. how to see you've done you yeah. know and you're you're working with the right team so that you can score yeah. like they're protecting so you're not playing alone right it's very similar very similar yeah. home i wanted to talk to you about in terms of when you're searching for your property like i know you said you had pre-construction so yeah what was that process like for you and i know it was it was it was a long time ago so but I wanted to just understand what your headspace was at. Yeah, no, for me, it was, yeah, it was very different because there was a, a few properties that I was looking at um, pre-construction. And again, yeah, I think it was like, what, five years ago, six years ago almost, um, where I was looking at different properties and there was one that I really did like. But then like how I said, right, like I went, I saw it and I saw that I couldn't afford it, you know, and I, was I disappointed? Very much so. I was disappointed. You know, I was upset because I did want to get home ownership. Um, and I couldn't enter the market. So then I think it took maybe like six, seven months later where I saw another project that was coming up. And I'm like, you know what? Like, I'm going to, like, I didn't want to, but I think I, like I said, you have the right people that encourage you to do that as well. So I got encouraged to go look. Um, it was a pre-construction and I'm like, I think I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try it again. I went, I got the paperwork ready. So in this, the only thing with this was different that I didn't work with the realtor. I worked with all the um Better. The, the builders, right? Mm. So directly with them, payments and whatnot schedule. So that itself was a little bit scarier. Yeah. But at the same time, for me, it's like, like I said, like I wanted, I had that goal. And until I didn't really take the step to go look and make sure that, okay, I have the mortgage. I know I'm pre-approved for this. I know I have this. I know I have a down payment, right? Like I gathered all the information. And I think with that first condo, the one that I was going to get um, try to go into, I didn't gather the information. I was going based on an assumption that like, oh, I think I have like a down payment. I think I have 5%. I think I have this. I think I have that. And I just went and I did it. Yep. Right. And I think that's what a lot happens to like, because of the excitement, we just want to go, go, go. But, I, but also, I don't think you knew, right? Sometimes like no. you didn't have a realtor that was helping no. you. The builder no. was protecting their assets and yeah. their and and they're there to help you with the applications if you don't have. Right. At the end of the day, you didn't have someone on your court walking no. you through the process of and representing you, right? I think there was yes. a big difference there. And, and that is different, yeah. Yeah, and like for me, for example, like Josh and I bought our we bought a condo, our first property. Yeah. And when we were going through it, our at the time, again, we were a bit of in the seller's market, but we we weren't in a hot market that we are now where things are disappearing within hours yeah. and days, right? Yeah. And although we were looking at it in downtown core where the properties were more enticing, there were less days on market, but we had flexibility around looking at more variety of properties. So I had a chance to right. look at variety of buildings, variety of layouts. Uh, we had time to think about it, but I also did, that didn't mean that I had all these buyers remorse that came to me. The moment that our realtor called us and told us that it's about to go sold firm, we were right. like, what do you mean sold firm? Like we can still pull out, <laughs> you know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. when can we, <laughs> it, it's the closing, like do we get to keep that day? Like yeah. I also, I love that you touched upon realistic because I, in order for me to be realistic on something, I need to know the environment. You know, I need to know what home ownership is. People have no, right. there's so many first time home buyers. I speak to them. They have no idea. I, you know, the other day, this is oh, so funny. I was talking to somebody on Instagram, another real estate agent about this and laughing because I was talking to a client that called us and, you know, and I, we couldn't help them. And because they called and said, Hey, I need uh, a two garage, house with a large garage and on a laneway for 400,000 in a Tobacco. And I said, sorry, this is not early 2000s. You know, not even. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I, it was really, they're misguided. And I, I kid you not. I had a client that called us. This is, I mean, oof, like late 2020. And, yeah. um, and she said, and she said, Hey, 
um, I heard on the news because of the pandemic, a lot of people having to sell their properties and they're in sticky situations so that housing market, the prices are going down and a lot of properties are going at a discount. And I yeah, said, yeah. oh, goodness, where? I want from the right people. And it's... As a, as a homeowner and someone who's looking to buy, whether you're a seller or buyer, and, you know, especially when you're a buyer, think of it this way. You make sure you're in control at all times. You may have, yeah. you may not know everything, and that's why you want to choose a really good realtor, mortgage agent, a good lawyer that's going yeah. to represent you and protect you, even a good inspector. I know it's really hard now, so you might want to do pre-inspection in, in this market. Yeah. And back in the day where we did do an inspection, you know, and I think that, for me was I really wanted to come to a point where, you know, I, I wanted to ask a lot of questions, you know, right. I was, yeah. in order for me to let go of my fears, I needed to ask a lot of questions. So don't think that a question is a bad question, you know, ask them no. because if you don't, we assume that you already know. And how many times have you spoken to a buyer that you tell them something and they're like, yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah, as in you get it or right. yeah, yeah. As in you, just, you just want me to keep mm-hmm. going. And, for sure. Yeah. Right? Like and that's and that's exactly it. Like people like it's okay. There's no silly questions. Right? Like there's no like because no one I mean that's why it's called first time home buyer. You got it. Right? It's your first time. So with anything that you're doing new that's different, that's your first time, you should have a lot of questions. Even if you've done your research. Right, like you know how like interest rates are. You know how the housing market is. You've done your research of prices and whatnot. So you've done that. You know it. But at the same time, like you getting that like let's say um, solidified answer is a lot better than just like, well, I think I know all of this, and you're going based on what you think. But it's always good to get that second opinion. That doesn't mean anything, right? It just means that you want to be a hundred percent certain, you got right? It. And that's good. Like the more you, the more you ask, the more you know. The more you yeah. get, the more information. A hundred percent. And oh, and hi, John. Thanks for your comment. I'll get in touch with you. Uh, I also wanted to say that your first home doesn't have to be your first, you know, your dream home. Right. You know, sometimes right. when people that comes to do with being realistic is that sometimes right. don't put expectations on yourself where you're you're leading yourself to fail. You know, there's a reasons why people go from, you know, there's a reason why people upsize and, you know, and downsize, right? Right. There's a point in your life you get to where you may need to downsize. There's a point in your life you may get to where you may need to upsize. And your lifestyle will grow. You will grow. What if you get a job somewhere where you may not need to work here in Toronto anymore, where you can go to the outskirts of Toronto? What if you may need to come back to downtown Toronto now that people are returning back to work? So really think about, your options in not in today maybe think about it in a little bit of a long term but also it doesn't have to be long term as in five ten years right you know yeah. you can you know there's really creative ways for you to you know and i don't want to overwhelm first time home buyers now but think of the possibility that your property that you buy your primary resident can help you refinance for your multiple right. yes you know, set you up for generational exactly. wealth and help you get into real estate investing and you know and and I want people to know that, and I don't want you to, you know, think about it going into it, that there's there's multiple options for you. You're not, yes. you know, you just, it's really all up to you is because you decide, you know, how and where and and when you want to do this. And if, if, right. if home ownership is in your lane way at all, I know people that have, um, I had a coworker who had an amazing job. He, actually, he was a manager too. And yeah. he senior manager and had an amazing uh, position his wife had an amazing position elsewhere at another institution and they both rented you know and in 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 closer to downtown toronto they had a they rented a home for a long time and they're like no we like renting we like going from places to places and that's just us we'll never own yeah that's totally fine right i just figure out what your lifestyle is you just live up to your own dreams and goals and and essentially why we wanted to bring this and i wanted to kind of go back to some of my own experience too when i was putting in the offer too is that i had no idea what that even meant right you know yeah like what do you mean by an offer so the seller can reject mine but why yeah you know but i didn't even know the type of questions to even ask so right for example if you're a first-time home buyer and you feel like you don't even know the good that that type of question you should be asking 
that's okay. That's what your real estate agent's for. Yeah. That one. I don't even yeah. know what I'm doing here. What should I be worried about? You know, and and for me was I'm a planner. All of you know this. You know, my my budgets have budgets. My lists have lists. And <laughs> for me, nothing made more sense to me until I did my own budget of you know pre-purchase and after purchase and putting all the costs that associated with purchasing a home and even yeah. after uh, you know possession what what are yeah. all the things that are to come you know sometimes i have clients that would be like oh i love this building and they send it to me and i'm like did you know the maintenance was that high i don't you told me your budget was you know and they're like yeah. oh 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 no and they're like did you know that this was inclusive so again there's a lot of multifaceted yeah. to this. That's why you don't have to think about it that's why you have your real estate agent but right think about it from pre-purchase to post-purchase as well yeah yeah and like and that's it right like i mean there is like your your ultimate goal could be like that big mansion <laughs> you know but there's steps that you have to get to yeah. right and especially i think even like that as a first time home buyer it's like maybe you you have yeah like i mean that's like the initial step right but like you can start off with a bachelor then get into a one bedroom build your way up like you said, right? Like there's different investment strategies too that are used to be able to get you to that mansion, to be able to get you to um, to that ultimate goal, right? And there's a lot of even assistance out there, right? There's like government assistance. Oh there's non-for-profit organizations that help get obtain home ownership. There's different type of like living that you're able to, right? Like enter the market. It's like it's, and it's also whatever like makes you feel comfortable. Right, because I think that's one thing too. Like reflecting back, that happened to me when I was getting into my first um, property. Is that for me, like, like you were saying about like lifestyle. It's like I completely changed my, and that's one thing that I to be like now, like saying, you know, what would we do differently? That's one thing that I would have done differently. I literally, I had a certain lifestyle, but then I wanted to get into home ownership, mm. and then I cut that lifestyle like in half simply because I'm like, my goal is to get into the market. Mm -hmm. But you know what that did for me? That made me feel a lot more stressed. It made me build a lot more anxiety. It get me built like really flustered because now I'm like, wait a second. I'm used to like every paycheck before. I used to be like, oh yeah, let's go out, you know, friends, family, let's spend my paychecks, mm -hmm. right? Like with things that maybe weren't important. And then when I got into that goal of like, I want to get home, now I'm like, I have to stop doing that because my life will change at some point, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't be just like spending, 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 especially if I don't have my full down payment. Yeah. You know, so for like a full year, year and a half, like I was honestly, I shifted myself in a point where it's like, now I, I don't go out as much, right? Like I didn't used to go out as much. I didn't spend because I knew the responsibility that I needed to have, right? Mm -hmm. Like and you touched about like, you don't know sometimes the expenses, mm -hmm. mortgage payments, right? Closing costs, yeah. like your, pay, your maintenance fees. Right? Like there's a lot of things again, and this is probably fine, like condo, but like even with the home, like with the house, there's like so many other expenses that you would not normally have if you're renting, if you're living at home. Absolutely. And I really right? wanted to talk about cost is another one thing, right? And another thing is like who you buy the property with as well, right? Yes. Sometimes people get pressured into, I've had people who pressured into be like, oh, I need a co-signer. And they just call anyone and everyone they know. And you realize yeah. that they're going to go on title and make sure yeah. that there's another process to removing them off title. So just be careful about that. And I can speak from my own experience of people in my own lives that signed on with people, with partners that were there for only temporarily. That's why even when Josh and I had a very strong relationship, Josh and I have been together for so long. But even when I bought, purchased our first home and Josh and I invested together, we were like, oh my God, who should we both go on title together? We Should we create a separate agreement? You know, we don't yeah. know yeah. what our relationship could, bear, could lead to, but you need to have an open mind about the fact that what are you sure of? Who is right. talk about all of that with your yeah. with your lawyer, yeah. right? And and sometimes that people, you know, I know in this market, you you're gonna be pressured to do things you don't like. For example, I bought I help buy first time home buyers for multiple properties without seeing them. And yeah. and we had yeah. multiple offers that were declined leading up to it. And that's just the reality. And some of the, but these first time home buyers, you, you, we sat down and explained all the, all the pros and cons, the consequences of doing this, but also, right. you know, what it, they, what it's needed to, you know, present an offer that is firm, you know, that is a clean offer. And, and, but what is that, that could do to you, right? With, especially if a property that you haven't even seen, it literally right. sold right. within hours of hitting the market, but, right. but there were other 
offers that were coming in without people seeing the property. Like nobody booked showings for this yeah. property, right? It just hit the mark. Uh, it just hit the, um, it the hit the hit MLS. So I think that essentially, you know, you having the right, you know, resources, the right knowledge. Yeah. But in the right mindset to to know how far you're willing to go and yeah. understanding if you know your financial situation and you've had a very good conversation with your with your mortgage broker, then you know what your your budget is. Properties are selling for ridiculously over asking. Yeah. yeah. So you can when people come to me and say, Hey, my budget is 850, 900, I'm not putting, you know, I'm not sending them properties at 900 because right. right so yes. think about it and you shouldn't be looking at it i had buyers yeah. sending me you know yeah and i have a crm where i can i track everything that yeah. people are looking at and what properties so i can tell my clients hey nope you can't afford this property or here's why you can't afford this one instead and you know helping them with with that search and i realized that sometimes some of my clients would send me properties that are so closer to their budget Right. And, and then yeah. I ask them, okay, this is your budget, but not, you yeah, know yeah. you have all these other costs that come with it, right? Yeah. So I think just do that little bit of research. It, it'll save you. You know, I love that saying, you know, go slow to go fast. So take yeah. a moment to sometimes just slow yourself down and do a little bit of that research. So that you, when you are ready to put in that offer, you win it the first time around, if not right. the second time around, but you, you're you able to put in an offer that is enticing enough, that is right. that is acceptable in today's market. And I get that today's market is, is super nutty and it, it is it is yeah. very, you know, it's challenging and it's very stressful and overwhelming for first-time home buyers. But this is why you need, make sure you have a really strong real estate agent, make sure you have people that are, you know, mortgage brokers that are really have access to multiple different. Right. Uh, this is one thing I always, you know, suggest and I, you know, let people know is that some people are like, oh, I have a, a contact at the bank, you know, and I'm like, that's great. But the bank only has access to these, these uh, products, the products a, a broker, exactly. that they have access to a broker might have access to these products. But then I also right. had brokers that only had access to these products. So make yeah. sure you talk to different people. So you have access to multiple different options and variety that is, is, is suitable for you. Right. Yeah. And I think that's it. I too. And it's like, you no, know, we're here, like, as real estate agents, we're not here to like burst your bubble, right? But we're here to to be able to tell you. It's like, you know what? No, like I said, that's that's your max budget. Like, why would you do that? Like, how can you go like, like, it's not that we're telling you don't do it, but it's just like, as real estate agents, that's our main goal too, right? To act in your best interest, right? So if you're going to be disappointed, like we are looking out for you ultimately, yeah. right? And this is why it's good to have someone that will just tell you, it's like, no, like you can't yeah. really like, go go in a little bit lower or like you know look at let's start looking at um, lower priced properties and then build right if anything mm -hmm. let's build right okay. but like not for straight off the bat like and that's i think that's important right someone that can be honest with you yeah someone yeah. that's going to tell you you can and cannot do it yeah and for me is i flip it the other way around for me is sometimes instead of thinking oh maybe this agent isn't the right for me but maybe they're actually protecting you and they're representing yes. you in the best way possible and actually yeah. This is better because they're helping you win your win your offer every time. If you're, if you'll know this, and if you've spoken to me and working with me, and I'll tell you like it is, and it is really is about setting you up for success rather than right. failure. So exactly. if you may think, oh, she's not going to help me get that nine hundred thousand dollar home. It's like, and it's like, you know, it's yeah. really painting the picture of yes, but here is how we're going to get there. You know, yes, exactly. What, what, what that looks like, and it may not be your way of getting there. And exactly, uh, you no, know, you have to trust us. <laughs> yeah, right you have to I, trust that where we know what we're doing 100 <laughs> percent. Right? and as real estate agents who weren't real estate agents who purchased yeah, you know, right. when we were buying our first property you know. one of the biggest thing for me now looking back some of the things that i've learned is that i wish i'd asked more questions you know yeah. but i also i'm glad that i trusted the professionals that were doing their job and right. i also you know and i and i think that i'm really glad that i allowed myself to to have access you know have to be able to allow myself to purchase this property because yeah. i know people that have access to funds they have access to help and they're just analysis paralysis they're letting their they're so afraid of something and a lot yeah. of people they're just like maybe this is not the right time maybe the market would crash maybe what if i buy this and then and then there's a market correction what if i lose a lot of money or what if i this happens that happens and it's just like whoa you are never yeah. You just you're in the way of your own, you know. So yeah. I wanted to just let people know is that their natural feelings, acknowledge them, right? And 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 how you can combat those feelings is 
instead of you answering yourself, take those questions to a professional and yes. people that do this and they do it really well. Right, right. Yeah, because when you're having like all those, right, like intrusive thoughts, right, like you're based, basing your opinions based on like your feelings. And sometimes, you know, they, they're not the greatest, right? Because now you're just over emotional on those thoughts. So even with that, like, yeah, ask the right person or calm your, I mean, I don't know how to say it, but like calm yourself down, right? And then think about it on a clear mind. You got it. You're right. So, mm-hmm. but yeah. And any, when looking back at some of your own learnings, I guess, going through buying your first properties or any other lessons that you want to share before we end the call for today? Yeah, just uh, like, I, I would say like the biggest thing, um, Termina, is yeah, looking at your whole financial situation as well, mm-hmm. right? Making sure that you do have a set goal of what it is that you want, what it is that you're going after, mm-hmm. um, right? Like, you know, continue being realistic with it and just know that if what you want is home ownership, you will get there. Mm-hmm. It is possible. It is possible, mm-hmm. right? Like anyone can obtain it, mm-hmm. right? But just make sure that you are getting the information, educating yourself, um, and that's it. And then just let everything else flow, right? Mm-hmm. And it will flow. You will get it. It'll be good. But just just yeah. trust. Trust that you will get it. Trust the process. Absolutely, absolutely, and and be and make sure you have all the right resources to be financially yeah. prepared, and you have the right resources and the right, um, you know, the right people helping you out, right? And just doing the due diligence. I can, just cannot stress enough that your you asking the right questions is gonna it will save you a lot of money. And I know yeah. that I'm speaking from a very much of an investor mindset, but Josh and I, we think very similar with any property that we purchase, whether it's for personal or for business, right? And I think that yeah. thinking, you know, thinking along those lines, but awesome, Carlos, this was a really good conversation. Yes. I know we were able to get a little personal and touch up yes. on a lot of little, little aspects of homeownership, but this is really folks just to, to let you know that, you know, Carlos and I want to do this and get into more of a granular conversation. What is it like yeah. to, be pre-qualified. What is it like searching for a home in today's market? What is it like to, you know, choosing the right real estate agent to doing the due diligence? And what is that process of being sold conditional to firm like and closing days like and, right. and yeah. having this more from our own experience and share a little bit of our own story to tell you that whatever you're feeling as a first time home buyer is very real and it yeah. is normal. And yeah. just, to, just to let you know, to acknowledge that, you know? Yeah, for sure. And that it's possible. Everything Absolutely. is possible. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And thank you, Carlos. <laughs> thank you everyone for coming. Yeah, thanks, and, yeah. And if you like this content, yeah. give, give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, make sure to get in touch with us. Uh, we're <laughs> Carlos and I are both real estate agents in the greater yes. area. And we're happy to help you with, with any of your uh, buying needs. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Bye.